folks, uh, Aaron the Pedantic. Today we're looking at People of the Pit by Joseph Goodman. It's a Dungeon Crawl Classics level one adventure. Uh, I have run this and it is very, very cool. And I just kind of wanted to talk about it, see if it's something that you might enjoy. So uh, as always, it's Dungeon Crawl Classics, so the art is going to be really cool. Uh, you know, as I said, this is uh, written by Joseph Goodman, who is, of course, the one who uh, made Dungeon Crawl Classics uh, with the help of many other cool people. And uh, this adventure is designed for 8 to 10 level 1 characters, which is not an insignificant number. Um, so if you don't have that many players, maybe you want to consider letting them run two characters. Maybe you want to consider, um, the, you know, having this done whenever they're level 2. Uh, it, that, you know, that will change a few things because, uh, in Dungeon Crawl Classics, things scale up very quickly with, with the character levels. Um, they become quite powerful. Uh, you know, so you have this section of background information, which it's useful. I mean, it tells you all you need to know, uh, but it's still basic enough that you could easily incorporate it into any setting. I actually incorporated this into Chalt very easily because there are some kind of Lovecraftian themes to it. Uh, so it fit quite well. Uh, you know, they always put this encounter table on here, which just lists, you know, what section or what area are they in? Uh, and is it a combat? Is it a trap? Is it both? Um, I've never really found this to be particularly useful. Uh, in, you know, just because of the fact that whenever I am running this thing, I am, you know, usually going to be turned to the page that has, you know, what's there anyway. I mean, this is a decent shorthand, so it could be a good reminder, I suppose. Um, but it just hasn't hasn't really helped me that much. Uh, now, whenever you're reading these things, they, they Dungeon Crawl Classics always has block text. I know block text is a uh, thing that not everybody enjoys. Um, there are some things that I would definitely change because it kind of blends the uh, I'm describing the situation versus here's my input uh, as um, like this omniscient narrator uh, kind of thing, you know, trying to make you feel things. Um, and I typically like to just stay strictly descriptive. So, I mean, of course, block text, you can just choose not to use it and just, you know, paraphrase. Um, but what I'm talking about, for instance, here, you have some some uh, great descriptive text, you know, just describing what it looks like. Um, and, you know, then, then you have uh, some bit about, you know, legends and things like that. I may have considered having an NPC that travels along with it. I mean, this, this is just how I would probably want to do it in the future because uh, I was kind of at a purist moment where I would run modules as, as pure as possible to try and get the intended result. But I, would, I might have an NPC that travels along with them and shows them the pit and then, you know, like says this kind of stuff, you know, um, as far as the, uh, you know, that uh, legends, oh, where is it, where is it? It's from the pit. The legends say that the pit beast would emerge to feast upon maidens chained to the bluff. Uh, and then the bottom part where it says hundreds of maidens have died here and they may die again unless you face down the people of the pit. It just sounds kind of corny. <laughs> <laughs> that last bit especially. Um, you know, it's like the thing that you would put on the back of the book to let people know what the adventure is about. Um, but, you know, then again, DCC is really uh, fairly popular at cons and with one-shots. So maybe it's just something that people are more amenable to accepting that, you know, we have this kind of uh, blend of just trying to get you in the moment uh, as quickly as possible and throw the information at you, the context. Um, so anyway, that's just a pet peeve. If you're incorporating it into a long-standing campaign, you may consider changing that. Um, you know, they get the chance to, to, they start out in this area looking, which again, you know, you, you might decide not to do that. Uh, there are a lot of things which, you know, like I said, this is just, I think it's just really built for this, that particular kind of play where, you know, you just drop them in and, you know, here you go. But, uh, you know, as it, as it's, it has them start on top of a, uh, bluff looking over the pit and, um, you know, so they get a good view of what it looks like. Just it's covered in mist for the most part um, at a certain point very, very soon, like very, very not, not very deep at all into it. Um, 
so you know they get they get a decent decent view of it. Um, there is a lot of um, kind of prescriptive ambushes written in that you know it's it's against my style personally. I'm kind of a, more of a simulationist where I would kind of I would use something I would use chance more more frequently. Um, but with DCC and you know a lot of times their modules have written in uh, they get to this point now there's an ambush or something like that. Um, and what I might do is I might incorporate, you know, some, the old BX kind of way of, well, uh, there's probably a five and six chance of surprise uh, at this point, unless it's being decreased by something that the players are doing. Um, instead, you're kind of left with, you, you assume that this is going to be an ambush unless they do something otherwise, um, which it can feel on the receiving end, perhaps a little bit um, forced. And that's never good. Uh, so as far as the, the baddies go, you have a cult that, uh, you know, they, they worship this uh, pit beast that was being fed maidens for a long time. Uh, it hasn't been fed for 10 years. Now the ground starts rumbling. People are all scared. And uh, so here come the heroes to deal with the problem. Um, you get there, and there are tons of cultists, and the cultists are going to vary in power. You have these rather weak uh, one-hit-die cultists that uh, are, you know, they'll just stab you. Nothing much to them. Uh, but every cultist has what's called this control check, and what that refers to is uh, the tentacle check. So basically they can they can control the tentacles of the great beast in the pit which you know the players can't see on the start but uh, they will definitely become equated with tentacles. Um, one of the things that, that this tells you to do is it just says flat out the, uh, the that uh, the, the players are going to start 40 feet uh, away from the gray robes you know. So what that does is for most of them, that means they're out of melee range. So of course, uh, you know, the, the players may be able to get there, but they won't be able to, to attack unless they're using ranged attacks. Uh, and that means that the cultists will be able to try to summon the, uh, the, the tentacles. I think that this was, I, I'm not really sure that the math is good for this plan. You know, uh, really, I would see gray, ro gray robes, I would hope, would be smarter than this. As you can see, they have only a D6 control check. They can do it together, so that means they can roll 5D6, which means that all of them have to work together to probably summon just one tentacle. Uh, that takes up all of, their, all of their time. And once the tentacle is summoned, it doesn't do anything yet, but... Uh, you know, so they can make it emerge the first round. The second round, all of them can work together just to grab a single character. So they could just grab a single character. We're talking about level one characters. In DCC, that means they're probably going to have between a minimum of two and a maximum of uh, 16, uh, 20, 19. HP. So, I mean, it could very well be worth it for them to continuously all work together to grab one person after they summon. So, it's round one, summon. Round two, grab. Round three, throw off the pit. By that time, most of them are going to be dead. Now, when they die, you have these octomasses that emerge from their belly. This is a really cool feature. Uh, it just adds more for the players to worry about it. You know, it does a little, little bit of damage. It's not much, but it's just, it's more for them to worry about. And that's pretty neat. Uh, it, it just kind of adds to how bizarre these creatures are. Um, so I, you know, the, 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 this recommends that you just go ahead and summon a tentacle, but the tentacle does not do anything without being ordered every round. So there's really... Not much point, uh, so I would just have them attack, you know. Um, I, I think maybe it's just to tell the players what they're in for, and also you can just toss them into the pit so it's an immediate death for basically any character that they that, the, that you have. Um, so that's just me, you know. Uh, and plus there's a whole bunch of fog, so the 40-foot, um, you know, distance whenever you're, you're starting to act, I'm not really sure... Uh, 
I, I guess it's I guess it's fine. They're not going to be expecting any uh, any guests on, of the pleasant variety, so it makes sense that they see a little shape in the the fog, and they're like, okay, time to summon. So I guess it it, it works. Um, so you know you have you have these uh, these things that got you got to move out of the way. Um, you know, I'm not really big on strength checks for stuff like that, or at least I'm starting to not get that way. I don't feel like if you have uh, something that it's just a matter of how strong you are, you know, to push something or lift something, unless you have some kind of um, debilitating condition going on, maybe you're dehydrated or, you know, your arm is broken or something like that, I feel like it's a better mechanic to just like look for how like a minimum strength score uh to say okay yeah you can move it um because of the fact that whenever you're just doing a dc 14 strength check you know you could have theoretically a, a little spindly wizard with uh three um three strength you know move it if they just happen to roll high so i i think that that's i think it's bad design personally a lot of people do it I've done it. Uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. People may judge me, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, so far, people are hearing me complain about a lot of things. But you have to understand that I'm just saying what I would do different. Um, there's still a lot of really, really awesome stuff in this. So you have branching paths. This, this, you know, this uh, is something I absolutely love in dungeons. And really, if the players are fortunate, they, they can actually bypass... Well, like 70% of the dungeon. I am not even kidding. And this may be something that a lot of people don't like. I personally enjoy that. Uh, it gives uh, their choices a lot of weight. But it also means that if somebody has played it before and they're really being gross about it and they're just, you know, wanting to uh, to, they're, to cheat for some reason, you know, then they, they can really, really throw a wrench in things. But that's not the, that's not the fault of the adventure at all. Uh, but this is definitely not anywhere close to linear, which is why I prefer it to a lot of other adventures. Um, so you have different levels of cultists uh, based on robe color, the grays, uh, the purples, the crimsons, and the blue. And uh, the blue is the most powerful, and it is able to control tentacles very easily. Um, the, there are several other kinds of creatures in this place. Um, and some of them, they're all kind of delightfully weird, or at least different, which is nice. Uh, you have a lot of traps. Uh, one of the things that's really cool is um, the players at some point, uh, the player characters have the ability to eventually be able to control the tentacles um, if they do good checks, but it's only going to be like one or maybe two characters that might be able to do it. Um, if they don't do that, there is a tentacle that they can climb all the way from the top of the place, all the way to the bottom, and then just go straight to fighting the, the final battle. It's, if they do that, they're going to miss out on a lot of stuff, um, it, both from a challenge perspective and from a reward perspective. But that's something, again, that I think is really important in old school uh, dungeon design is, you know, the more that you're willing to put on the line by being thorough, the more you're going to get uh, as a return on your investment. Um, so again, like you have, you have basilisks here, but they are, you know, they have a little bit of extra flair. Um, you know, they are, uh, they have golden horns. Um, they have been feeding on rock for a lot of, a long time and they they tend to petrify people. They live in harmony with these uh cultists because the cultists are blind. They actually cannot see. Um so, you know, they get along just fine and there's there's just kind of kind of a neat bit about it. The um the basilisk uh, as you can see, uh, for those that don't know, uh in DCC whenever you have multiple uh, build, like attacks that you can do or actions you can do, it's just it adds another die. So maybe you have uh, one D twenty act die or yeah act and it'll say one D twenty plus one D sixteen, uh, and uh, that means that they have two actions, but the second one they they have to roll with a lower die. Uh, some people don't like the dice chain. I don't mind it, um, but not everybody has the funky dice and doesn't like to mess with things. Uh, so you have magic items that can be found. They're not plentiful. 
This is not something where uh, really there's going to be a whole lot of gold payout unless they are thorough and it's still going to be decent. But there are a lot of places where they can pick up new companions uh, that are enslaved, uh, that are prime for future level zero characters, uh, you know, to bring in to, you know, or you can just, you know, my character died. Um, I don't have anything to play, and then now, okay, we have a whole bunch of level zeros. I'm going to control four of them. You know, yeah, it works fine. Uh, and then they can kind of hurl them at the enemy until they get the, the XP to get to level one. So uh, you have a very interesting, a very interesting puzzle. Uh, this looping maze. So uh, basically, the idea is something that is hard to translate when playing it online. So I'm kind of actually fortunate that whenever I ran this, the players skipped it on accident. Um, so the whole idea, and I will get to the handout. There's a handout that you provide them and they will trace the path that they wish to go on, with pen so that they can't, uh, can't mess around. And there is a very specific path that they have to take. You know, it is a maze. And they, they can't turn around. So, you know, this means they have to be very precise. If they turn around, they take damage. So uh, it's... But if they get from one end to the other, then it takes them to the next area uh, by means of teleportation. And you do the same thing in order to get back. So it's... Uh, you know, it doesn't play. It does not play around. Um, I, like I said, I didn't get to use it. Uh, but if you, um, if you do, it's going to be hard to translate that into doing it online. Maybe you can do it with virtual tabletop by having them drag their tokens. But even then, um, you know, kind of have to watch them closely. That might be the best way. Just say you can move your token like one little little uh, blip at a time so I know which way you're going uh, and then the moment that you have to backtrack you take damage that could be some way of handling it um, most of the other stuff is you know, there, there, there's there's secret stuff uh, that they can access they can find secret doors and things like that um, there are a lot of different uses they have for spell checks uh, there's some potions that can have some negative effects and some that can have some positive effects that are, they're not like just your standard fare potions. Uh, it's, you know, a little bit more inventive than that. One of them is what lets them uh, control the tentacles, which is very cool whenever that happens. Um, there's, oh, I mean, this is a really so decent sized dungeon. Um, and, you know, they get the opportunity to save some villagers that have been captured and being kept as slaves. Um, you know, there are, you can kind of learn more about how these, uh, these creatures were once human. Um, and beyond that, there's even more, um, there's even more, uh, <laughs> well, now I lost my train of thought <laughs> all of a sudden, um, Oh yeah, there's even more content I didn't, I haven't even accessed yet. Um, there's an additional, depending on which version you get, uh, an additional uh, part of the dungeon that's available after you finish the main quest uh, that the players might return to uh, called Assassins of the Pit. I can't really speak on that. I haven't run it yet. It looks interesting. Uh, it looks quite lethal. Um, it looks like it would be fun, but I can't really judge it appropriately. So here, here's a look at the maps. I mean, if you haven't seen DCC maps before, then, you know, you don't know what you're missing. They're really, really awesome. So this is the sacrificial bluff I was talking about. Um, you know, this is this path where, you know, remember I mentioned that you have the cultists that are in the, the mist. Uh, and, you know, I guess that's that 40 feet they're talking about as soon as they step down here. Um, 
So it's easy to see how summoning that tentacle could, could you know, be a good thing. But logistically, uh, from the mechanical standpoint, I don't think it's really that great. You have uh, some kind of branching paths here where they can uh, take this, this one or this one. Uh, this one is the one that the cultists use, so it's clear. This one is the one that they know not to use, so it's full of traps. Both of them have somebody waiting to ambush. Uh, there is um, a... A hidden area down here. I don't think we ever mess with that much. Um, you know, if they are, if uh, this is this is kind of what I was talking about. If they can't open these doors for some reason, you know, uh, may, if if you use the the rules as they're written in this, you know, then there's really no reason. It's just a matter of how long it takes them. But uh, you know, you have this this opening here where you know you could find a way for them to get through this path and then you have a whole other section to go. Um, you know, my players had no, no reason to do this because they, they basically, they skipped this one, they went down to this one and whenever it came to the traps, they dealt with them quite easily. They saw cobwebs and said, uh, we're going to burn those. And then it was fairly obvious then that the trip wires were there. Um, once they work their way to this tentacle, it says howdy in its own way by just kind of like leaning toward them. It doesn't attack or anything. It's kind of like the, the thing that tells them that this might may have some significance. And then they'll notice that there is a rope ladder that is stuck to it. So then they know they can climb down to different levels. And this is what allows the players to traverse all the way from the top to the bottom without having to do all this other stuff. But if they take this path, then it is, that this is whenever they're going to encounter a much more difficult uh, way, way through things. Um, you know, whenever you get to this, you have this, these uh, tentacles that are going to be swiping at you when you're on this platform trying to get this drawbridge down. Uh, you have this, this here maze thing that, that I've already uh, gone into with, with y'all uh, that will um, eventually they get to this, this giant demon toad of bug um, which is its own very cool thing. Uh, it's got psychic powers and, um, you know, my players didn't get to go up against that, which is a shame, but at the same time, they really are fortunate that they didn't. Um, you know, there's, uh, this is the floor where you have the, the slaves being kept and there's workshops, um, these pods are used to get down to the next floor. But again, you know, if you just keep taking the tentacle, then, uh, you know, you don't, you don't really have to do any of this. And like I said, some people are not going to be fond of that. I like it, but I completely understand why others might not be. Um, there's, uh, you know, this, this room has, uh, this floor has just a whole bunch of uh, egg pods. And, you know, just you, you start seeing more of how these people trans, uh, transformed into these creatures over time, you know, by way of looking at, at the, uh, the workshop and all this kind of stuff. Uh, once you get to the bottom, uh, there's basically, this is, this is kind of where the final encampment is, um, you know, and you, by that time, are finding that they are preparing to sacrifice a young lady. Um, and it, you know, it, it becomes a very cinematic battle and all that kind of stuff, which is something some people appreciate. I found that it was neat, um, but again, I'm kind of a simulationist, so I w there's, there's a part of me that was like, maybe you need to set uh, a certain amount of time on like the calendar or whatever, and it's like, this is how long they have to, to make this happen. And um, basically, you know, to, this is again why I went out of my way to make sure the players knew that this was happening. So that I was like, okay, so this means if they take more than uh, 10 hours, uh, then this is, you know, th th that person's going to die. Uh, and they know it, they, so that means that they can, they can choose to press on because of the fact that they want to save that life. Uh, instead, it's just like, no, you can really dilly-dally as much as you want, and as soon as you get here, that's right whenever they're about to do it. Um, depending on your philosophy of gaming and all that kind of stuff, you know, you may not care about that. You may just be like, whatever. And I think that a lot of DCC modules, other than this one, um, really lend well to that kind of thinking. Um, this is part of why there are certain DCC modules that I've had a lot of grievances with is because of stuff like that, where stuff just happens because we want it to happen because it's cinematic and cool. And I'm just not big on set pieces. 
Um, you have some really neat encounters over here. You have some chance at some treasure. Uh, you know, overall, there's just a whole lot, whole lot of cool stuff here. The the final showdown, there's all kinds of cultists and these these towins, which are these uh, really r tough creatures that are like half earth elemental. Um, and then you also have the blue cultist, which is going to be controlling all kinds of tentacles. Um, <laughs> whenever this fight went down, it was pretty funny actually, because what happened was, uh, one of the characters used, um, word of command on the blue cultist and told him to jump. Um, and you know, I just, I kind of went, Oh, he rolled exceptionally high. Uh, the cultist rolled exceptionally low, and you know at that point, um, even I, I believe even suicidal commands had to be uh, kept. So um, that was how it ended. He he jumped into the depths, and uh, it was clever and it was funny. Um, I'm not sure if it was actually how it's supposed to how if it was the best way to adjudicate it but we had a good time that's ultimately the important thing anyway like i said i really can't say much about assassins of the pit um the adventure overall i really love this adventure um it's like nine eh, ten bucks for a soft cover and you can find it at most of your friendly uh friendly local game stores which probably need support so um consider it that's all I can say about that. Um, so I would I would recommend it. You know, you may have to do some some alterations to taste, and that's to be expected with anything. But it's a great adventure. We had a great time, and uh, it's I'm just glad I got it. So let me know what you think about it. Uh, I probably should have announced something. I'll, I'll do it in a short. So that that's it for now.